seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh. Alright, we're live. Uh, hello? Yeah, hello and welcome everyone to uh, Coin of Classic 2023. Uh, this is the second day, and to open this uh, wonderful day, we have uh, Cotton Rock and Roll. Uh, I'm M Knight, and I'll be commentating the run. The star of the show is Radical. Hello, Radical. Hey, and then how's it going? Thank you for oh, having I'm, me. I'm doing fine. I'm looking forward to this run. <laughs> yeah, I am. So you're going to be playing uh, this game with uh, Apley, yeah. one of the characters uh, in, the, in the game. And uh, hopefully you show us some cool tricks, some cool stuff. Yep, so we're playing so normal mode. Apple, yeah, playing normal, we're playing Apple. So yeah, this game has like multiple characters, but I'm gonna be focusing on Apple. Apple's like Cotton's better rival. She's best girl. Uh so I'm gonna let the little <laughs> how to play go through so you can kind of explain how this game works. Yeah, so basically the game is played with three buttons. Uh, you have a shot button here that you can tap to get those like main shots. Uh, and if you hold it, you can unleash magic spells. You can see on the bottom left there's like magic spells you can store. Uh, there's three types, like the fire, the lightning, and the tornado. And you need to collect crystals uh, to either replenish your power. Those yellow crystals will replenish power, and the colored red, blue, or green will give you magic spells. And those are important for score, the magic spells themselves. Uh, there's also a unique ability that Apple has, she can grab enemies, so that's with the special button. She catches an enemy and then uh, the enemy just around her, she can throw it on other enemies, or ram enemies with it to create chain reactions. And those two tools, the magic and the enemy catch mechanic, are going to be very important, because that's what generates bells, and those bells uh, are going to give you points. So Radical is going to try to score. And it starts with Castle Garden, this is the first stage, uh, yeah. you have to play the stage first. But we'll see later on, there's like stage selection and all that, so... Alright, and I'll leave it up to you, M. Knight. So I'll try to comment when I yeah. can, but M. Knight will be carrying the commentary. So, here we go. Yeah. Best of luck, Radical. <laughs> Thank you, man. Hey, here we go. Alright, so yeah, first stage. Seems kind of breezy, like a, like a cool introduction, but you can go right away, like catch enemies and start scoring. You can see Radical is catching an enemy, uh, he holds it, he touches enemies with it, and that creates crazy chain reactions. When he catches an enemy and he, and he hits an enemy with it, that generates an explosion, and the explosion can also hit other enemies. Uh, and all that generates spells. And you can see him also using the magic spells, uh, lightning, fire. For now, it's, I don't think there's like any specific magic you need to use, but there'll be times where some magic spells will be more useful than others due to their inherent properties. But right now, his goal is to use all those tools to try to maximize the amount of spells he can get. Another trick that he just did here is like waiting for those red devils to throw the spares so that he can also cancel them with magic for extra, extra bells. And the bells themselves, they give you points, they also increase the multiplier. You can see on the top left, there's a multiplier. It goes to 99. So whenever you collect bells, uh, the multiplier will increase, and it goes up to 99, but if you don't collect bells for a short amount of time, that multiplier will decrease. Uh, and you can see it right now, like it decreased all the way up to 81, because for a little while there wasn't any bell collecting opportunity. So at times, um, it can be useful, especially against the upcoming boss, to basically not collect all the bells right away, wait a little bit for some of them, uh, and collect them as to keep the timer alive. And now look at that giant tornado. That tornado was like so powerful. Tornado is kind of useful in the in specific situations. You can you can grow bigger and bigger and bigger uh, if it hits many enemies and bullets. So now the first boss, uh, as with most bosses, if not all bosses in the game, there are two phases. Right now it's on the first phase, so it's just this giant spider. Uh, so what he's doing is he's following basically the cycle of attacks and trying to keep some bells on the screen, catch an enemy to make sure you can use it on the next wave of enemies. And uh, he's setting up his magic as well, trying to get uh, some favorable magic spells to use for the second phase. So, 
You can see the health bar at the bottom, and the boss will uh, move to the second phase. Not based on health, but based on time. So what happens, see right now, even though the boss was like 95% like health, he moved on to the second phase. And the second phase is that spider girl who throws these fireballs. And, and Radical does a specific trick here. He sacrifices lives to replenish magic. And that's something that we'll see, we'll see uh, a few times in the run. Uh, and he does that because basically there's no real penalty for losing lives. And if you do that, you replenish the magic. And he wants to use that magic to collect, uh, to generate and collect bells. So that's something that is um, maybe unusual at first, but when you get used to it, that live system, live as a resource, is just wonderful. Yeah, and right now he's gonna set up... No kill. Yeah, oh, maybe. Oh, barely. Uh, what did he get? Nah, no kill. Because uh, when the boss leaves, uh, it drops this uh, 68k candy. But if you kill it right as it's leaving, it will also drop a second one because because you when whenever you kill a boss, it also drops uh, such candy. So it can be kind of cool to try to get this double candy trick. I don't think all the bosses do that, but the first stage bosses do definitely. And now yeah. you can see the the map has opened up a lot. Yeah. Uh, so. so so now we're gonna go into uh, the basically a remake of Cotton One stage. Yeah. So yeah. this one, I wanna try to get like wind magic because there's gonna be a bunch of lasers that I can know. Yeah, and the 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 whirlwind magic will grow bigger and bigger, and it's very useful against those uh, those lasers. Oh, but, <laughs> so we just gotta get to oh, get there. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, you're, you're all set up now. So, yeah, so as Radical explained, there's basically uh, like a bunch of extra stage here, or as I said, like various stages you can choose from. Because the first one is always going to be stage A, but then on that giant map, oh wow, look at those bells, there's so many bells. <laughs> wow, watch this part. What, so what, what you can do is uh, choose the order in which you're going to play those stages. You not You can't play all the stages on the map. So in the end, a run will still have, uh, I believe, eight stages, um, where the first one is always going to be A, and the last two stages are always going to be the same uh, stages that are not there on the map. But uh, we'll, we'll get them, well, we'll get to them later. So what he's doing is he's selecting the stages which are the most lucrative for his character. So as you saw earlier, there are many, many characters in the game, and everyone has different kind of tools. And oh wow, look at these like whirlwinds. Like those laser enemies are like very lucrative if you can exploit the lasers correctly. Because it's constant bell bells uh, bell generation. And yeah, with Athlete, he wanted to uh, get into this stage first. This is the stage, yeah, this is a, a remake of a uh, Cotton One stage. There's a lot of homage stages. Uh, on the map there are uh, the plates in yellow, and the blue stages are like the regular stages in a way. But uh, the only difference is that some of those like those homage stages are references to other games. So this is the the Cotton One game, uh, the Cotton One stage, but there's also like Cotton Two stage. There's like a Psy Barrier stage, Sun Vein. Uh, we'll see some of those later on. And, uh, and some of the stages, like this one for example, is relatively lengthy. Like compared, for example, to the Cotton Two stage, which is too short to be featured in the run, unfortunately. Uh, this one has also has all these laser enemies. And uh, because they are worth a lot of points, uh, it's pretty important and useful to put them into, the, into your route. And now we're fighting the boss, uh, which is uh, yeah the first boss from, from Cotton. So in his first form, he, he mostly like, hangs out uh, on the right side of the screen, and from time to time like, he stomps the ground and like throws these bullets at you. The fireballs can be kind of dangerous, but yeah. the dynamic difficulty for now is not too high. You can see the main strat, if you don't mind, like, yeah. the main strat here is really just yeah, uh, yeah, sure. get these, like, basically just pepper the boss for the next phase. So I'm, like, getting him low enough to just yeah. get that bottom part for a quick Unlike kill. Because the... in, the, in the first stage, there were scoring opportunities in that first phase, but right now, not so much. The second phase, though, which starts right now, is like, okay, now there's going to be birds, so you can use those birds. Catch them and do a chain reaction and start generating bells. And that's when you can start building up the multiplier, collecting bells, and uh, setting up for a kill on the boss as well. 
but oh nice, very nice. He used that powerful fire magic. The dragon is like quite strong. It doesn't stay on screen for a very long time, but it's quite strong. So for some specific speed skills, or like to ensure the destruction, destruction of a part, you're gonna use it. And now uh uh I believe he's uh, going to go for the kill Damn. on the boss. There we go. Did he get it? Oh wow. nice. Because there's a, a certain amount of uh That was the last one. Yeah. That was the last one, yeah, and afterwards afterwards he, he just times out and leaves. So that was pretty good. Yeah, decent. Setting up a high multiplier on this boss is not easy. Yeah, it's tricky. It requires a lot of like timing and just like waiting it out. Alright, so Royal Tomb, this also has a lot of like laser milking and uh Yeah. Yeah, basically it's laser milking, so I'd say the biggest gimmick in this stage is to make sure I have three lightnings by this mid part where there's gonna be a bunch of lasers and I'm gonna use those lightnings on oh, yeah, lasers yeah. to hopefully get like seven mil. <laughs> it's a very juicy uh, scoring section for sure. Yeah. Uh, but the stage itself is is not a, an easy one uh, because of those uh, yeah lasers everywhere and um, some traps as well like oh, yeah, some very flame throwers in the background. Yeah. Some like spiked spares that like pop it out of the walls. You can get kind of trapped at first when you don't know what you're doing, but it's a high risk, high reward stage, I want to say. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Very high risk, high reward. Because uh, right now, there's like, see those blocks like that shoot laser. Lasers. They're, they're pretty, pretty good to score. Imagine now there's like 10 of them or something like this. That's the section that right now. Yeah, right here. That Radical is uh, going to score on. Oh, nice. He got another lightning. See, you can use the lightning, which is not as powerful as the fire magic, but it lasts longer and has pretty good range, so it's very good for score here. That was intentional, by the way. <laughs> yep. That's the setup for this boss here. Yeah, so that, that replenishes your magic, absolutely. And speaking of lives, uh, I think we haven't mentioned the fact that in this game, you gain and extend every 5 million points. So, losing lives is actually not really that big of a deal if you are able to score, because you can regain the lives pretty quickly. Like, right now, you're at, like, what, like, 40... Wait, 45 million? Well, that's... Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to such big scores <laughs> in the early game, but... That, that just shows... Uh, that goes to show, like, how many extends you get. And in the end, like, you can sacrifice so many lives. Uh, so don't be afraid to use lives as a resource when building your score rounds. And this is what Radical is doing. Especially against uh, the bosses, for example. Um, because not all of them will give you opportunities to... Oh man, that, that magic was like beautiful. The lightning is like, it's probably what he wants here, but... Uh, the lightning, the I'm trying to go for wind. But yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this part, this part is kind of tricky because uh, those... Uh, yeah. You, you're tempted to go and destroy those uh, those pyramids but oh, if you're not careful you risk destroying the snakes as well and if you kill the snakes too early you won't be able to get their later uh, to appear which is a, a missed score opportunity but radical may like cruise through the stage like it was easy it's not <laughs> this stage is a bit crucial and, and now we're fighting the boss first stage has locked all these cat heads so it's trying to destroy all of them so this is one of the bosses where you don't really have to lose lives on purpose. At least the first phase. Um, oh, damn. You don't want to try to lose lives. At the, at the, that, uh, the last phase, you can kind of lose a bit yeah, of lives. Yeah, on the second phase, it, it could come in handy. But in the first phase, you usually don't need it. But it can be kind of tricky because in yeah. the chaos, like... There's so much stuff happening. The crystal. Yeah, yeah oh, absolutely. Oh, oh boy. Like, All right. so <laughs> Let's chill out. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, yeah, um... That, that's a, a bunch of lives lost, but there's still like four lives in the bank. You can see the like the, the circle icons in the top left in the HUD, and um, 60 million points, not too far away, so he's gonna get some extends back. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not worried either. Like, but the boss is gonna die right now? pretty easy, quick. Yeah. So the boss is gonna die once over here. Yeah. There we go. Nice. So, I mean, yeah, that boss like could go on nine. for like maybe four more phases. Uh, yeah. But, eh. I mean, like, because I did way too much damage to the first phase. So, you, you want to enter the that first phase. phase yeah. 
with like half HP, with the boss at half HP. So you can just milk out the rest, because usually you just ram into the boss after you use your magic, and the fire does so much damage that you just need to account for that. Anyways. Absolutely. Yeah, damage control is awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, damage control is a big so thing. After... Yeah. <laughs> yes. So after three regular stages, you get sent to this uh, bonus stage, uh, Argentum Clavin, which is kind of like a homage, a reference to some previous cotton games, like Panorama or Rainbow Cotton, where it's like this range shooter perspective. And it's a short bonus stage where you have to collect uh, teacups for points, basically. It's a nice little breather. Yeah. If you collect more than 100 teacups, you get an extent. So, uh, you can't just do nothing. Yeah, as far as I know, there's no secret and, uh, bonus for this too. Which, oh yeah, so if you notice at yeah, the oh end, yeah. I'm only getting the black teacups, that's because if you avoid all the white ones, you actually get a secret bonus of 200k, yeah. which is worth way more. Yeah, and that's it. Like, so, so, some sort of cotton tradition. Uh, at the end of stages in cotton games, usually there's like lots of falling teacups and you have to avoid them for a secret bonus. And there's also, in, even in the bonus stages here, you can also try the secret bonus, but it's worth less, usually, than uh, trying to collect them. Alright, rage oh, stage. Oh, now we're gonna go to stage E. So this oh, is that, basically that, a caravan, so... Get ready so... for some insanity. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see if that happens. There's a few sections in the game, uh, and this one is one of the most noticeable ones, where basically, when you, as soon as you kill an enemy wave, the next one spawns. So Radical is gonna play like super aggressively, like, look at him like spamming all the magic, like there's no tomorrow, like catching enemies and all that. Because as soon as he destroys a wave, he gets the, a new one, and the stage duration remains the same no matter what. So he wants to milk, to speed milk in a way, uh, as many waves as possible out of the stage. And uh, the, the craziness does not even end here, because, I mean, he has to kill them with the magic, so he has to juggle the crystal collection, but also grabbing enemies as a backup if he doesn't have any magic available, and he also has to be careful, like, not to get rammed by an enemy, because if he dies, uh, then, like, the animation itself will make him lose time, like, opportunities to speed kill. And later on, like, he's also gonna, at some point, because that section is gonna end and the scrolling will go upwards instead, Ah, oh, I missed it. An <laughs> oh, you didn't. Oh. Missed it, yeah. Damn. Because see now, like the screen goes up, and if you let an enemy, it's probably a trick or a glitch, but either way, it's super cool. If you let an enemy alive during that scrolling switch segment, for some reason, the, the red enemy that they were falling will be doubled. You see twice as many, and that's really good to score. And like it, it gets like insane in terms of like scoring potential because you basically get two, twice as many points. <laughs> but this is still pretty good. Oh wow, like he's, he's juggling and like playing with the <laughs> enemies. But now we're fighting Wu. Uh, she's one uh, recurring character in the cotton games. So one of the few references to all the cotton games that you can find even in the regular stages. Um, but the, the fight itself is pretty straightforward. Uh, at least compared to the insanity that was the, the stage itself. Uh, just gotta be careful for the bats because she spawned some of them. Uh, yeah, his first phase is pretty on... tame, unfortunately. Yeah. Really, my goal here it's, it's is to get hard. her to half HP, so I can kill her yeah. in time. She's getting there. And, and I mean, because because the bats spawn like kind of periodically with a long downtime in between, it's kind of hard to maintain the multiplier. Because even if you collect bells, and then there's not much to cancel, or you don't have like bats to grab. Then the multiplier will decrease again. But the dragon here on the second phase uh, is a bit more lucrative. And there's this phase, this pattern where lots of lots of bats spawn. And you can possibly regain a little bit of magic, but if it doesn't have magic, it can also al always sacrifice his life, which is fine. You want to sacrifice lives for resources. There's still one reason why you might want to not sacrifice too many lives, is that uh, you can see right above the multiplier, uh, there's some sort of gauge, a yellow gauge that keeps increasing, sometimes decreases, that's the rank for dynamic difficulty. So, what happens is, uh, if you keep playing well and all, everything goes well, uh, that that increases. And the game gets harder and harder. That's a proper double kill right there. Good... Nice, yeah, we saw the, the, like the, two, the two candies, we got yep. 68k times two. It's funny, because it's really guess... not that big a deal, like the boss kills worth yeah. way more.
But Absolutely. it looks sick, so go for it. Like, and who can say no to some more candy? Definitely yeah. not console, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Anyways, now we got Riverside. This is another kind of interesting stage. There's like laser milking, there's the caravan section at the end, there's speed yeah. kill. It's it's a really nice involved stage. Definitely it's one also of the. Not... Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, you go ahead. Oh yeah, it's, it's also a stage where you want that rank level to be at a specific level, at least above a specific level. Yeah, above 35,000 or 35,000. Yeah, that, that's what it's it seems like. <laughs> because when it gets above that level, uh, the boss will fire some additional bullets, which won't be there otherwise. And more bullets means more oh, things okay. to cancel, which is good for score. And now we set up for this, uh, these specific enemies. See that that tornado gets um, incredibly huge, and um, and also it stays on screen for such a long time uh, because you, because you kept beating that tornado with like bullets, and this is something that the other magic spells won't be able to do. So this is definitely a, a place where you want the right magic type uh, to optimize. And look at those like all those tornadoes in, in the bank. So that that is also something that he has to pay attention to while also juggling like everything else that's happening. So he's shooting, is dodging the, the bullets, is cancelling stuff. He also has to juggle crystals in the heat of the action to make sure he gets the right magic for the right moment. And there's some sort of like cycle to it. Like it's not completely random or anything. Oh and now see that with the right magic he was able to speak to the smithball. Yeah. Those bunny head enemies are all extra enemies. So you get more and more of them uh, because you speak to the bit bomb. Like there's like a specific down, not downtime, like a duration, a specific a set amount of time before the other the boss shows up and destroys the. Oh, here it is, the eagle. It destroys the bridge and then we move on to the next section. But the faster you kill that mid boss, the more time you can spend in that bridge section and just get all those bunnies and, and their bells. That sounds fun. And now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now another section where uh, Radical wants to speed kill enemies, including that that second mid boss. It's also part of those enemies that can speed kill. Um, so this sky section before the boss has like a uh, bunch of waves. See those UFO waves? They are very lucrative because it's like a giant group of, of UFOs. And you can use that catching mechanic. Just grab one and then create the chain reaction. So he doesn't have to like handle the, like the magic as much here, but. Uh, probably wants to set up some crank magic for the boss as well, I guess. That's good. <laughs> yeah, so that's like a timed wave, like basically it's again, like, you just keep going until, uh... Uh, what's the word? You keep going yeah, until... Until the end of the segment. Yeah, until the end of the segment. Uh, yeah. like, but... yeah. So this boss is a yeah. lot of bullet milking, yeah. For example, these red bullets that are aimed at the player wouldn't have been there if uh, Radical died too many times earlier and lowered the rank too much. Yep. So that was intentional. Uh, and, and that one, yeah, that one is uh, no because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because you want you, when you, when you also when you sacrifice a life, you always respawn with the same three magic spells like fire, lightning, and, and then the whirlwind. So if you have a setup that uses that specific order. You can also use it to your advantage uh, by sacrificing a life and making sure that you have these magic spells. If you have to juggle crystals, uh, sometimes you get the wrong magic spell, you don't get what you want, and it's a bit messier. Now, there's another downside of uh, like losing life, is that you lose power. Uh, so you've got to be careful for that, but uh, right now Radical is like power level 3, and he will mostly use the magic spells for damage anyway. Yeah. You may not kill this boss in time, but eh. It's kinda yeah. worth as long as I get this last trick going here, which should be okay. Yeah. So right because here, this is the last the wave. Kill? He's about to go oh, yeah. summon his kin. Look at yeah, all these spells. The oh my god. Uh, look at how I'm just gonna let him go, though. Though. So oh, me yeah. me yeah, missing him too much help. Me missing him is like only like a million loss, which I mean Yeah. Going for like top score, yeah, that's a reset, but we're a marathon. Yeah, so. there's, still, <laughs> there's still lots of leeway. You can definitely have a very high score, even if you don't kill the bosses, as long as you perform those milks and those core tricks correctly. Alright, last 
selectable stage, we got Earth 5, or Earth 3. This is the Cyveria yeah. stage. Oh yeah, Cyveria, another awesome game from success. This is actually uh, basically... Yeah. Uh, not word for word, but very yeah, similar to stage 1 and the Volcano stage. In Absolutely. that game. Uh, if you played, if you played Cyveria Revision, then the enemy waves here are like, gonna be very familiar. Uh, it's basically yeah the same composition as those first two stages, and uh, but the, the mechanics themselves are like different. Like Cyber is a game that's all about grazing bullets, and there's a, a Cyber character in the game actually. Uh, but with Apple, what we're gonna do is still good old magic spells oh, and catching enemies. Well, that was nice. So, but yeah, I kind of went a little crazy with the magic, but I lucked out, got a win. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this stage, this stage is a bit different in the sense that uh, it doesn't have tons of enemies, but they shoot plenty of bullets compared to some earlier stages like the Cotton stage, for example, where you see those massive swarms of birds and all that. So some of the characters play really well in this stage because of that uh, focus on the bullets that we cancel. But others kind of suffer uh, because there's like maybe no opportunity to replenish the magic crystals or, okay, or things like that. But. Uh, Ackley? I mean, Ackley is doing fine oh, uh, damn, at that stage. Oh, thing died quick. Whoopsie. Oh. Oh. Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's one enemy you want to... Yeah, you would have still been alive there uh, with that second wave of green enemies. Uh, but, um, yeah, this is also another example of, like, why damage management is a thing as well. You sometimes don't want to be too aggressive. So you want to, like, let the enemies fire all the bullets. You can cancel them for, uh, for bells. But it's not too bad because the main scoring source in this game, in this stage, I mean, is gonna be the boss. This boy, yeah, this guy. Peg G from Cyber as well, like, it's, uh, once again, same kind of patterns and the uh, same boss design, but uh, this time, we'll be using Apple's tools to get some, uh, some score. And the thing is, if you notice... Hey, I'm just gonna pause because I don't know why what happened to the uh, commentary. Are you there? I'm not. Did I just see? Did I just see? We good? No, oh, they're still going. Huh. There you go. You back? Uh, oh, okay. Okay, that was that was weird. I don't know what happened? Yeah, we're good. All right, so we can resume. Yeah, yeah, I pause, so we're good. Don't worry. Oh. Yeah, it's all good. So um, yeah, this is one of the bosses where you want to, to enter this boss with plenty of lives uh, because you know you're gonna sacrifice a, a fair amount of them in order to score. Because some of the characters have ways to generate bells that are uh, renewable and others that are resource based, and Apple is kind of a mix of both. As you can see, she has the magic spells. Magic spells are like a re uh, consumable resource. If you use magic spell, you need to collect the crystal to get it again. Uh, but catching an enemy, that's uh, infinite use. Oh my god, look at that beautiful world. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that pattern is like so lucrative. And you, you fire the whirlwind at the right time, and it cancels the entire pattern. And that's something that uh, you have to like, practice the timing to really maximize it. And make sure that you're synchronized with the like the magic and the and the life sacrifices as well. Yeah, so important to note, so every wave's about 3.5 mil and extends every 5 mil. So you kinda You can get it's yeah. not like an infinite loop, so you do need to have some some in reserve, but you can keep going. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of leeway if you come like with low-ish lives. Because we mentioned that you can uh, gain extends every five million points, but you can't get like a, a million extends in the bank. Uh, you're you're capped at like six ex ex extends at once. Um, so that's the max you can carry. Well, this is a little high for my comfort. So let's see. <laughs> well, the boss does this second cycle on the second phase five times, I believe. Then uh, he's gonna leave. Yeah. So hopefully I get this kill. Hopefully there we go. Okay. I don't want to take a chance there. Nice. It's also possible to kill the boss as it leaves for a second uh, candy, but uh, the timing is quite strict, I believe. 
Uh, yeah, it's from Strix. And they'll do two It's not worth it. <laughs> because the thing is, when you kill a yeah. boss, you also level up. And since this is the last stage, I want to be level 3. So, mm. I'm level 2 right now. If this next section here, this next, like, bonus stage is, like, another bonus stage, but... In the story, you, like, just so happen to have a booster that gets you into space. Because you gotta go to space for some reason. Uh, yeah. Gundam fans, uh, the, it's, if you know the Dendrobium from uh, Gundam uh, Stardust Memory, this is kind of familiar. Yeah. So basically, this giant what I'm gonna do, creature. now I can destroy these T's for crystals. So I want to get a level 3, and I also want to get 3 fire crystals. Oh! Alright, well I got the yellow one. Here's the one. Nice. Here, yeah, that. so this, this second right, bonus stage... Second... Uh, bonus stage is kind of different in the sense that you can indeed destroy the crystal. So there's kind of like a risk reward system. You can choose to not destroy the crystals no, and not, not get magic, yeah. uh, but that that means you will miss out on the extent, the, uh, the hundred teacup extent, because you destroy the teacup instead of collecting them. But Radical knows that he can get lots of extents uh, in the upcoming section. Yeah, uh, he's not super low on lives, so he wants to set up like a, like good magic to fully. Uh, capitalize yeah, I, on the next section. I wanted the, to the last two stages, but I picked up a win, but two fires. So I'm just gonna use the win right off the bat, and then just get the fire in the stage. Yeah, and hopefully not die. That's cool. So yeah, absolutely, because it resets your magic. Right now, Radical wants uh, as much to carry as much firepower as possible uh, for, with its magic for an upcoming section, because there's gonna be a mid boss. Oh, is he? oh, yeah, nice. He got all three fire magic. Now he has to yeah. keep the, that magic uh, up until the set mid boss. Because there's gonna be a mid boss with uh, a bunch of cores as well. And the scrolling uh, is, a, is a little bit strict in the sense that you can try to speed kill that boss, like here, like mid boss, like here it is, that giant spaceship. You want to, and you, oh, he's gonna use the magic spells on the core. And did he get it? Did he get it? No, oh, I didn't get it. Damn. So, what happens uh, be like that. if you. Speed kill the boss. Yeah, if you speed kill the mid boss like that, instead of doing that segment where there were some UFOs, you would immediately move on to the next segment here and get extra enemies. You get extra these guys. These guys are super. Yeah. Easy. These missiles are like, like this. This part, insane. Is oh, it's so good. Like the scoring potential of the last two stages is very high, especially compared to the to all the previous stages. And this is one of the reasons. Like in this stage, the second to last stage. This segment is extremely lucrative, and in order to fully uh, enjoy it, you need to really speak to that, that boss earlier, that giant spaceship. And, uh, I mean, I think Radical still did a pretty decent job, even though he didn't kill it in the first cycle, like, the, the most optimal way. Uh, he was still able to kill it on the way back and get a lot of, lots of enemies, which also replenished all his extents and uh, gave him yeah. a good amount of power. Alright, so this boss is a lot of milking too, so... Yeah, so we're fighting Takus, the, the main antagonist of the game. Uh, we're gonna be fighting him like in with several forms. Like right now, it's just it's just him, but he's gonna bring out like lots of toys. He has lots of toys on his own, and uh, you can't really generate bells without magic in this fight. I mean, there's no enemy to catch, uh, at least in this first phase. So that's why Radical used the life that he just collected. Like he just spends them uh, in order to get those like see the giant tornado. And uh, generate lots of bells. And uh, the the fire and the lightning are also useful. Uh, I'm not so sure if he's gonna be able to kill the boss because this boss has like um, lots of health somehow. I know that some characters kind of struggle uh, to defeat this boss on time, but uh, it's not, not so bad as long as you can milk it. <laughs> so watch oh, this. Watch this. Fun this is why Athlete doesn't struggle. Oh, oh yeah. Take a, take a look at this. Look at that damage. The chain reaction. The chain reaction, it's insane. And the health bar is like melting. It's almost melting too much. You gotta be careful not to kill yeah. too fast. See, now I gotta be careful. This is, uh, yeah. Yeah. You see, um, when Radical caught one of the UFOs, like the, the boss uh, spawned UFOs from the back. See those enemies, like. And by collecting one and generating a chain reaction, it all goes back to the boss and then deals heavy damage. And now, look at that! You can bully Takut! Just push him around! <laughs> whoop, yeah, whoop, they'd be careful though. Whoop. Oh, and it's worth... Yeah, it's yeah. worth points! Let's go! It's worth like 10k <laughs> plus each time so you fun. do it. It's fun, yeah. But you can push him off screen, so you gotta be like really careful. If yeah, you saw me like, 
kind of nudging him a little bit. That's why I was yeah. like adjusting. And if you want to be like extra technical uh, and extra fancy, you can even combine it with the secret bonus if you collect no teacups. Uh, you oh can god, that's, that's super excellent. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just focusing on the uh, uh, bumping tackle is uh, is uh, already good enough. And yeah, that early segment in the last stage, we're now into the last stage. Uh, so there was like a, a little segment that was kind of like the previous stage with those uh, turrets. But now we're fighting some aliens, some allies of Taku, because Taku has not uh, given up yet. There's going to be another fight against him. And we're pretty glad there's this uh, other fight against him, because it's oh, going to yeah. be worth a lot of points. This is some little Salamander right section right segment. here. Salamander escape yeah. section. And it's not just... It's not just for pure survival, because if you shoot those red walls, Ooh. you get a few tick points. It's, it's not much, it's it's almost <coughs> nothing for you, actually. Yeah, you get but a few tick points. It's still fun, I guess. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not like Gorega style, where like, you get a ton of tick points, but... So I guess it's worth something. Every point counts. Yeah, here... Here... Yeah, for sure. But here, like, the main source of score is the bells. And, uh... Yeah, now Takut is also... Uh, also has one of those, like... Like mecha armor things that you had in the earlier bonus stage. He's like, yeah, I have one too, and he's shooting at you with it. So <laughs> yeah. right now, that first phase. Once again, those boss phases where you don't have ways, at least with uh, with Apple, you don't have ways to replenish uh, bells without sacrificing life. So you kind of need to have some life in stock and spend them. Like, see that magic? That's actually pretty good. And there's, but there's nothing to catch, so lose life. It's not too bad because the second phase um, is gonna give you so many points that you're gonna get back those lives anyway. Oh yeah. And now yeah, he ditches the the small robot, the big robot. And now what happens is there's a first phase, the first pattern where, with lots of bullets, and then the missiles. The missiles are like so lucrative and he shoots so many of them and the catch mechanic works on this missile so Radical can just grab the missile and then use it uh, to create this chain reaction. He doesn't want to stay too close to the missile though, uh, I mean too close to the boss when the chain reaction starts. He wants to avoid killing the boss too early so it's kind of a balancing act but one that is very very lucrative. See that's why he's here on the left side. It starts on the left side it's like he slowly makes his way towards the boss. Uh, and missile explosion oh, also gives him crystals. No, uh, oh. it's yeah, okay. And, we and do it because the magic. Yeah, it's all good. See, see, in terms of lives, like back to like maximum already. Like, is that 210? 210 million, which is like a pretty crazy score. And uh, that score just keeps increasing on the the last few cycles that the boss has. Uh, so he's gonna use the magic. Oh yeah, so the magic gives you a few iframes, I believe. Yeah, uh, it's so definitely I mean, each one. Can... Yeah, so that's how you can get through the boss itself uh, without dying. All right, so we're gonna get to the final, the final salvo. Uh, Boom! All right, All right there's gonna nice. be nice. There's gonna be a big missile. Yes, very very nice. He destroyed the big missile for like a million points, and then the boss itself for, like ten million points, I think. Yep. Um, that's big a bonus. beautiful finish. And now the final tea time. Yeah, make which, it uh, do this. Uh, yeah. Very nice. Congratulations. So the final score is like 247 million. 247 million. Yeah, it's which pretty is, good. It's pretty good. Pretty damn good score. I mean, your, your personal best is a little bit above at 260 million, I believe. Yeah, it's and 260 the million. Orchid, well, yeah, and Orchid. the Orchid World Record. Yeah, it's is like, that like 270? Yeah, it's like 271, I think. It's by so, uh You're actually not that far away from it. So so hope you guys enjoyed because this was uh, like a crazy performance with uh, lots of scoring everywhere and the final score that is very very respectable. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. I you know, unfortunately I get I didn't get some of the cool tricks, but uh it is what it is, you know. Uh, yeah. But, absolutely. That. You know, I Happy to be on the marathon. I hope this cotton pilled some of you guys because, like, this game is so good. I, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I've yeah. poured like 100 hours in this game. I bought it back in like October, like, beginning of October. It's so good. Like, cotton, like, yeah. even Apple. I, I was in. Yeah, go ahead. 
I, I was also like really impressed at like how quickly you picked up Apple and they just soared through the leaderboards because you've <laughs> you've played you've played seriously as her for like maybe a few weeks and already you're just so far uh, into the scoring potential. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Like, um, it's just cool. Like, you just get the resources and you know you talk to like the Japanese players. Like, Dog Fool Man is the guy who has uh, the record, and I just talked to him. He gave me some resources and we'll go from there. Um, but anyways, I don't want to keep you guys. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you, M Knight, for commentating. Yeah. Thank you to my friends yeah. for uh, supporting me. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, RGL, yeah. for giving me the opportunity. Do you have anything else to say, M Knight? Sorry. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks for this beautiful run. And if any of you guys is interested in the game, it's available on like uh, Steam, uh, Switch, PS4 as well. So you can pick it up and uh, have fun as well. Uh, so see you guys. Yeah, take care, guys. Shoot them up, never die. <laughs>